Hello, everyone. Welcome to the latest episode of the Part of Vision podcast. I know what number it is. Do you? Do you remember what number it is? This is the introduction. Um, I don't normally do uh, a video introduction for those of you who are watching, but I feel that it is an utmost necessity. But this week, uh, Luke has told me we were doing a live podcast record. And I was like, okay, how's that going to work? And he said, I'm going to come round your house and I'm going to do it. So I was like, fair enough. He comes around my house and a minute before <laughs> we start recording, he's like, well, are you not going to set all the equipment up? And I'm like, I had no idea that you wanted me to do anything. I don't know why. <laughs> I thought, because it was like a live thing, he had something like organized, like some kind of streaming software. But he wanted, I don't, he wanted me to do so. He wanted me to figure out that end of it. But he never asked me to. I don't know. So what happened is we recorded it. We had some technical difficulties, um, but we got there in the end. The first ten minutes is just audio, but then the other fifty minutes is video. So you might just have to listen as you watch. <laughs> For those of you, you as well, you just have to listen. And then 10 minutes in, our faces will appear. Do not be afraid. Promise me. (laughs) But uh, nonetheless, it's a happy occasion. This is the latest episode. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Pottervision podcast. The podcast where every single week, myself, Lucas Kirkby, and this man opposite me, Tom Lawrenson... We look at a chapter of the Harry Potter books and we just chat about them, don't we? Now, we're very excited because today we're doing a a live podcast record, aren't we? We've got some of our patron listeners listening in live. So you can't be saying any of the things that we have to cut out normally in the edit. Why not? Uh, I don't know. Well, I suppose we can and it'll just be a secret between us and uh, the people listening. Yeah, who are they going to tell, James? (laughs) James, Caitlin, Daisy, Amy, Peter, Lucas. Who are they going to tell? I don't know. <laughs> Can we trust you? Can we trust ourselves? Um, no. No. How are you? I'm good. I'm very well. I'm currently uh, a guest in your home, aren't I? Yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah, yeah. I've had one night so far. I've got a couple more. <laughs> And uh, it's been bloody brilliant, can I say? How far away is Clandon now? It's about an hour and 45 minute drive. Oh, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. And yet you invited <laughs> me, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. It's been funny having you as a guest. I yeah. forgot, forgot to clear out this room, so there was a load of stuff yeah. on the floor. And it was funny, I was clearing your walkway yesterday. Yeah. There was a load of like, camping stuff on the floor. Yeah. And you st- started making fun of me, going, Ooh, what a big difference. What a big difference having a clean floor is. And I was like, I think it's important to have a clean floor. Yeah. Middle of the night, you got up. <laughs> uh, yeah. And over a mess that you had made yourself, yeah. you fell over. <laughs> I did, yeah, because I like to get to sleep by watching boring videos on YouTube, and so... uh, Do you know what he finds boring? Pornography. Nah, (laughs) hey, I've been watching maths lectures. (laughs) He's rude, isn't he? (laughs) Nude maths lectures, eh? (laughs) Eh? So I was uh, was watching that to go to bed, and I had the laptop charged in, and when I got up in the middle of the night for, I hope you don't mind me saying, a wee... Uh, yeah, yeah, I tripped over and fell flat on my face. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a nightmare. I came in at the same point. Uh, I thought he was praying to me. I said, about time. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to uh, let me down, so you carried on praying. I carried on, yeah. I started bowing. I started asking for gifts <laughs> and uh, forgiveness. And safe passage into the kingdom of heaven which I rightfully declined. <laughs> he said, no. <laughs> but can I say, I wasn't expecting this at all, but Tom has waited on me hand and foot. He's, uh, he's made, I've not been here 24 hours, and he's already cooked me up two lovely meals. Mm. Last night for an evening dinner, we had a cooked breakfast. 
And then this afternoon, well, about midday, you made a lovely tortilla wrap. Mm. Oh, it was lovely, can I just say. It was a full English, wasn't it? It was a full English last night, wasn't it? There and were today, hash browns. A burrito wrap. A burrito wrap. The cheeky git that you are, I, yeah. I presented the wrap to you and I said, yeah. you've got to wrap it up yourself. Yeah. He could not see the tortilla on the plate. He thought the tortilla was the plate and he thought I was asking him to wrap up an omelette with his bare hands. <laughs> Yeah, and did. He, like, and he looked at me, concerned for me, and was like, oh, I think I'd be better off with a knife and fork, dear buddy. <laughs> and I'm like, if you want. And then he sees me do mine, he's like, ooh. <laughs> ooh, ooh, I want that. Well, he's done, he's done all the ingredients for an omelette, put an omelette on it, and then there's a tortilla under it. So I thought it was an omelette you'd made yeah. me. Did it fill you? Oh, it, it still filled me now, to this minute. No dinner then for you? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you've been a lovely host. Yeah. And uh, if I was on, you know, what's it called, Airbnb, I'd give you five stars out of five and I'd come back. Yeah, do you know I'd give you? What? Four. Four. <laughs> I'll take it. I've been a, a quite good guest. The guest laughed at me for clearing the floor and then was doing somersaults at 5am cent. <laughs> <laughs> I'd take that. I think people would read that and go... Love him as a guest. <laughs> doing gymnastics in the early hours. I don't know if I'd... Uh, <laughs> doing gymnastics in the early hours. Where yeah. have you been today? Lucas left my house at about one o'clock in the afternoon and he said, I'm leaving, and you left. Where did you go? So I've been away for six hours and I was on a hunt for some Potter Vision props and costumes and the fruits of my six hours work is that I've managed to buy this cricket ball <laughs> that is going to be a, a fake rememberall in a new scene that we've uh, that we've written. Can so, we do it now? Yeah, yeah, can you remember it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just it's a matter of squeezing it in front of you. Yeah. That's all we've got so far. Yeah, if he'd remember to land on his fat ass if he'd give this a squeeze. Yeah. 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 It was funny because... Uh, Lucas listed his plans last night at the dinner table. I said, what are you going to do tomorrow? He goes, well, I'm going to venture to some costume shops to try and find a uh, hat. And I went, you want to check if any of that exists beforehand? <laughs> Maybe make a call? And he went, no, no. And, uh, yeah, such is, it, such is life, I guess. Well, I was convinced that there were three, because I've been to them, there are three fancy dress shops in the Arndale Centre. Mm. And they're all shut. Can I tell you something? Yeah. Let's shock you. COVID-19, worldwide pandemic. You heard of it, buddy? Yeah, yeah. Shut a lot of things down. Did it? Mm. Oh, dear. Yeah, so, yeah, I think that's, what's, uh, that's yeah. what's got me in the end. Did you treat yourself while you were out? I treated myself to a pepper army. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Where'd you get that from? Uh, co-op. Yeah, a drink? Um, I had, oh yeah, I had a little break in McDonald's and I had a frozen strawberry lemonade. <laughs> I don't think it would be an episode of the Potter Vision podcasts without someone eating a pepper army during that day, would they? I don't think so, no. It's part of our routine, isn't it? Yeah, I've had some salami throughout the day. Have you? Yeah. Ooh. Before I came up here, I hope you don't mind my breath, yeah. I cut up some cheese and onion and just ate raw onion and cheese. Hey, that's nice, isn't it? He's going to be sat next to me for an hour. Hey, why not? <laughs> we'll get the garlic cloves down there. We'll get the raw onion. Fuck it, a stink bomb. Let's <laughs> <laughs> swallow one of them. <laughs> um, that yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. Fuck it, a stink bomb. <laughs> so you've had a good day then, have you? Right, Tom. Go on. Are you ready for a chapter 36 rundown of this Harry Potter book we've been reading? Hell yeah, brother. I can't wait any longer. <laughs> chapter 36, The Parting of the Ways. Dumbledore ties up Barty Crouch and then he sends him away to his office and he also sends Snape off to do something, McGonagall off to do something and Harry to the hospital wing so he can get better, the poorly devil. Mm. Next minute, Harry's waking up to a right old Barney. It's McGonagall, it's Fudge. They're having a right old row because Fudge has sent a Dementor up to suck the living soul out of uh, Barty Crouch. He's mm. sucked his soul bubble off. And so uh, he then... Just made himself giggle. That's good. Then uh, uh, 
Fudge is like denying that Voldemort's back. Dumbledore's getting angry. It's a bit heated and it's a bit frosty. Oh. And next thing you know, Fudge has stormed out and Dumbledore is like, right, let's get all the old gang back together. We need to start preparing for the return of the Big Dark Lord. Mm. That was chapter 36, The Parting of the Ways. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> what a chapter. Oh, oh. <laughs> it was dramatic, wasn't it? It's getting me sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The book is nearing an end, isn't it? Yeah, this is the penultimate chapter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what a chapter. And what a chapter. What yeah. did you like about it? I liked everything about it. We start off with Dumbledore tying up Barty Crouch. Hey, it wouldn't be Harry Potter without a bit of binding <laughs> and a bit of gagging. i got to say, whenever ropes fly out of a wand, <laughs> it definitely has to be my favourite part of a Harry Potter book. Yeah, 100%. Because it really reminds me of dark magic. Yeah. Because what are ropes like? Snakes. S- snakes. Yeah. yeah. And what are snakes? They're dark. E- evil. And they're evil. Oh, and man. they're mean, yeah, yeah. It gets me excited. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's just like, this must be about the seventh time in this book series that someone's been bound and gagged mm. by some magic ropes. Which, in real life, you don't see people getting bound and gagged that much, do you? Can I just say I've never seen it? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anybody bound and gagged. Yeah, I've wanted to. Once I did a really funny trick where I pretended I was bound, not gagged. If you are a child, which many of you maybe are, you can sit in the corner of the room, put your hands behind your back and like tuck your knees under and then shout, Mom, they've tied me up. (laughs) And then your mum will come in and go, untie him, untie him. And then you go, ha ha. Who were they, your sisters? Uh, no, the builders that were around. <laughs> <laughs> the builders? Them there trying to plaster a wall. We don't know what he's doing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he asked one of us to hit him. <laughs> Come on, make it look real. Make it look real. <laughs> That's mad, isn't it? What do you mean? How fast <laughs> was your mum's response time for you, like... Screaming in peril. Uh, <laughs> was she quick? In reality, yeah. uh, my mum was walking through uh, the room when I did it. And then, she, <laughs> and then she said, untie him immediately after my screams. Yeah. So it just happened to be that she was walking in the room. She might not have come, maybe. I was waiting for it. Yeah, yeah. Bloody neck. I might do that. But then uh, when you realise... Your wedding. Yeah, yeah, my wedding, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've tied me up! Help! <laughs> so feel free to have a go at that at home, uh, even if you live on your own. Yeah? Pretend to tie yourself up, sit in the corner and <laughs> scream until a, a neighbour comes to help you, or maybe the postman. <laughs> And then relish once their face yeah. how it unfolds when you show your hands you're naturally bound. Hey, what a classic practical joke. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> now, Harry is understandably, I think this series of events have got him more than any other. I, I think he's been really traumatised by this. How do you mean? Well, I feel like, you know, Chamber of Secrets didn't bother him. You know, Ginny being like petrified corpse on the floor. Not bothered about that. Mm. You know, murdering a man in the Philosopher's Stone with his bare hands. Mm. Turning him into ash. I feel like that didn't bother him. Uh, but now, you know, it, his friend dying, I think, you know, finally it's getting to him. Maybe you, it's, you think that's messed with him? Yeah, definitely. It's uh, traumatic, isn't it? I'd say so. And yeah. it's really the beginnings of no one believing him, you know, thinking him a liar. Yeah, yeah. It really is funny to go like from such a horrific, uh, what do you call it, like moment of your life, yeah. you know, seeing uh, someone get brutally murdered in front of you. <laughs> yeah. And then to have a load of men in an office going, go on. Tell us what happened. It's bloody horrible, isn't it? I'd rather forget. Oh, we want it fresh. (laughs) Fresh from the source. I know, because Dumbledore's like, oh, the longer you leave it off, 
the more painful it'll be when you come back to it. Mm. No, no. Give him a day to process it. It'll mm. be absolutely fine. Mm. I think he's mad saying that. Let him have a bit of time to distance himself from the events. Come on, tell me now. Did you like hearing about how the Wands are brothers? I loved hearing about how Voldemort's wand was the brother. <laughs> They're brothers. Well, I didn't know that the the wand's feathers were from forks. Oh, I didn't. No, I didn't know that. That was a, a piece of information to me. So they've been plucked from... See, I always assumed that the feathers were, like, from a dead bird or something. Well, salvaged. Well, yeah, I didn't know they were being, like, yanked out of an alive bird's ass. How, how do you know they came out the arse? Well, I don't know. They all, I thought they all start near there, don't That's they? That's just wishful thinking on your part. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. Well, like, this bird, folks, he's just minding his own business eating some seeds. Mm. And then suddenly Ollivander comes up and yanks two feathers out of his back. What for? A wand? Maybe it was prearranged. Do you reckon? Yeah, it's like a bit of a conflab. Mm. What for? <laughs> Folks, is that to sign a permission slip? Mm. Right, look. How many can you give us? Well, no wonder he's crying all the time, then. Yeah, exactly. You end up being just like a naked bird. Or maybe he was crying over the story of two brothers fighting. Yeah, yeah, it's not nice, that, is it? As we read in the Bible, brothers shouldn't fight, should they? No, because they'll end up killing each other, won't they? Mm. Yeah. Hey, neither of us have brothers, do we? No. No. <laughs> we are purely sister havers, aren't we? Oh, I don't, don't like the way I said that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, bloody hell. Yeah, what do you make to all that? Oh, I don't know what to make of it. I'm just reeling of the fact that Forks is. I don't think he has given permission to have these uh, feathers plucked out of him. Oh, yeah. I think he's uh, a victim of Ollivander's treachery. No, because, like, Forks is like Firebird, isn't he? Yeah, Phoenix, Firebird. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do you think it's in tribute to Guy Fawkes? I think so, yeah. Yeah, because he explodes into flames. I think you're right there. Yeah. He's named after Guy Fawkes. Hey, what do we think on the live chat? Do we think that's bollocks? Or do we agree? I think it's uh, I think it's definitely Guy Fawkes. We went to see London Dungeons. Yeah. And in it was Guy Fawkes, his executioner. And he goes, no one's going to remember Guy Fawkes' name. Everyone's going to remember my name. Master E. Bates. Was Mas it? Master Bates. <laughs> Is that what he said? Yeah. That's brilliant. And I went like this. I went, crass. And everyone turned around. <laughs> Even me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Peter Green is saying, no way is he named after Guy Fawkes. It's impossible. So, there we go. <laughs> it's impossible. Hey, Snowy did London Dungeons and loved it. That's good. We had a good time, didn't we? You mm. were laughing at me being Mr Bean, weren't you? I don't think we said this on the main pod. We did. Or was it, was it not a double vision? I think it was on the main pod, was it? Yeah. Right, um, now, yeah. in the films... Yeah. No, I'm gone. Go on, what are you saying? In the films, Sirius isn't in this bit, is he? No. Do we see him at all? We only see him in the fire, I think. Yeah. In this film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah. when he finally dies, like, if you only watch the films, you're like, why is everyone so bothered? We've barely seen him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but here he's a lot more involved, isn't it? Yeah, because mm. they don't go and see him up the mountain either, do they? No. Hey, Caitlin thinks it was definitely named after Guy Fawkes. There we go. One each. So whoever comments next will be the truth. Yeah, That's how it works, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, Sirius Black appears. Yeah. And Molly Weasley, rightly so, who thinks Sirius Black is a murderer, yeah. goes, Oh my God, it's Sirius Black. And Ron goes, Oh, come on, Mum, get over it. Yeah. Well, can I just say, nobody's questioned the fact that there's this big black dog in the hospital. And he's been, <laughs> he's been there for about, like, 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all having this meeting about uh, about <laughs> Voldemort coming back. There's a massive dog next to the bed nobody's mentioned. And then suddenly it turns into serious 
Fucking hell! <laughs> it's serious black! Who is it? Who is that dog? Nobody mentions it before then. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't tend to mention. I don't. I don't give dogs much attention. If I'm in a room and there's a dog there, I'd be like, don't look at it. Yeah, but have you seen the size of Sirius Black? And they're in a hospital. If you're there, right? Don't tell me if you're there visiting a relative, mm. right, in hospital. They're lying in bed, and you've got all their loved ones around them, and a dog. Yeah, but and no. they don't own a dog. All these people, they all know Harry, but they don't know each other, do they? So people are probably like, that's probably Dumbledore's dog, isn't it? It's Dumbledore's <laughs> dog. <laughs> Dumbledore's got a, yeah. a, what is it, a, a, a phoenix? He's got a phoenix, he's got a hat. He's got a dog. Maybe yeah. it's Hagrid's dog. Yeah, that was my thinking, that maybe it was going to be Hagrid's dog. Mmm. Yeah, yeah. Who bloody knows? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he hums to himself. <laughs> um, yeah, so Fudge is Dementor happy, isn't he? Yeah, he hasn't even spoken to anybody. He's yeah, yeah. always been trying to get Dementors in the school, hasn't he? Yeah. Sirius Black went missing. Yeah. Flood the school with Dementors. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, what's he called? Barty Crouch. Barty Crouch is in there. Yeah. He rides on the back of a Dementor up to... The office. I don't know if he rides on the back of a Dementor. <laughs> he does. He, does. he rides it like a bloody motorbike. I'd love to see that. All the way whipping the, the sides. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> Sucky soul bubble! He, he rides it all the way up, right? Oh, yeah. I see a little man drinking a coffee. He rides it all the way up. <laughs> and um, the Dementor gives a, a Barty Crouch Jr. the kiss of death. Yeah. Do you think he did that intentionally? <laughs> the kiss of death. Oh, bet you won't get that shot. Oh, kiss of death. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, do you reckon I think so. He's trying to hush up the idea that um, Voldemort's back and he thinks if I kill Barty Crouch yeah. Jr. I think so. No, yeah, I think because it says that he does a weird smile and it mentions it about three times that mm. Fudge did a strange smile. Do you think, why is he. Why is he doing the old Cheshire Cat impression if he's that scared? Yeah, why is he doing the old Cheshire Cat impression? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what, you know, is there something on the agenda? It makes me think he might be a dark wizard. I don't think he is. But just a bit suspicious, isn't it? Why would you be smiling at the idea of the world's greatest evil bastard coming back and killing more people? Mm. Yeah? Would you be smiling? Yes. Mm, well, I'd be suspicious of you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Fudge, like, it begins, doesn't it? Like, the Ministry treating Harry Potter like he is a lunatic. A loony, yeah, like a resident of St Mungo's. Oh, but oh. Harry doesn't help himself, does he? He, oh, starts, do he starts accusing every which person there ever been. He's like, hey, you know, bloody, uh, what's his name? Malfoy, McNair, Abbotts, mm. whatever they're called. He's just like, right, keep some of your cards close to your chest. Mm. Don't be showing everyone your hand. He'd be shit at Uno. Mm. Be playing his reverse cards and his double up cards one, all in the first two moves. One excellent metaphor. Yeah? You, you, like truly, you truly <laughs> are the thinker of our generation. <laughs> I am. You, you know, I just go down avenues other people don't even consider. <laughs> A lot of it goes down to children's games. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's like Buckaroo. Harry's piling <laughs> on all these names, and before you know it, they're all booked off in one failed swoop. Hey, it's just like <laughs> Operation, isn't it? He's trying to pull out all the organs without it beeping, but he's doing it too quick. It's going to be yeah. buzzing. Mm. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Bloody hell. You're right, I, I, I do say that a lot. If um, <laughs> I could kill Cornelius Fudge, like, for not like, for not like, you know, standing up for what is true. If I was Cornelius Fudge, I would yeah. go out of my way, I'd hunt Voldemort down on my own, and I would kill him single-handedly. Yeah. Would you make that? I think that's brilliant. <laughs> How would you do it? How would you track him down? Um, I'd uh, be like, Harry, where was he last? And I'd go, he's the grave of his dad. Yeah. I'd go there. 
look for a clue. Yeah. Maybe he's still there laughing. Why aren't they doing that? Do you know what I mean? Like, where is he? Um, All right, graveyard. Right, apparate. Let's get him while he's still like and guess in that, his nighty. Guess I'd kill him. Go on, strangle him. Would you? <laughs> <laughs> it might work. That might it. Yeah. But then that'd be weird, wouldn't it? Because you know he's still protected by all his horcruxes. Imagine strangling him. <laughs> he's running out of breath and his face is turning purple. He's like, whoa! But he doesn't. But he can't die because all his horcruxes are still intact. God, I've been strangling him for half an hour. <laughs> he's, he's gone purple and he's stopped breathing. He's still with us. I like it. Yeah, I like that. That'd be good. Dedicate half an hour. Yeah, to the next Harry Potter film of that, just strangling him constantly for 30 minutes. That'd be good. Yeah, I'd like that. Be better than them Fantastic Beasts films people are disappointed by. What do you think? Hey, someone's having their dinner. Peter, uh, true to his name, he's got some green beans and some slop. <laughs> it looks raw, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got with them green beans, Peter? He's having his last meal. He's, gonna... <laughs> he's poisoning himself. Oh, he's sad. He's sad made now. fun of his meal. <laughs> when, I was at, when I was at uni, uh, Louis Shaw yeah. made fun of the meal of Gerald Brent. Yeah. And um, Gerald Brent... Uh, Jerry Berry, should I say. Yeah. And uh, Jerry Berry... <laughs> it sounds like an Agatha Christie murder <laughs> mystery, doesn't it? Lewis Shaw was unhappy with the meal of Gerald <laughs> Brent. <laughs> Next thing, Father Lawrenson arrived. No, but... Um, yeah. Je- Lewis said to Jerry... <laughs> yeah. Lewis said to Jerry Berry, he went, your dinner stinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and Jez stormed off in a mood going, you should, in complete seriousness, he goes, you should never make fun of a man's meal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God. Yeah. Um, I don't think I could ever get a... And there's you, me, me. having a go at Peter's dinner. Yeah. Don't you feel bad now? I'll do a bit. <laughs> I like the green beans. Just wasn't very happy with the mush that was next to it. <laughs> <laughs> Peter's typing with his little fingers. Moussaka Mofo. Mmm. Moussaka Mofo. I think he's calling us a mofo. He's what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a moussaka. Lovely. That's lovely. <laughs> mm. And uh, so they're all going on about this. It's, it's very... I felt really awkward listening to this argument between Dumbledore and Fudge. Mm. It felt like a really awkward breakup. How do you mean? Well, like, <laughs> Fudge was like, oh, all the things I've done for you, and I've let you do the school how you want to do it, and now you're doing this to me. And Dumbledore's like, well, if you think like that, then we'll have to go our separate ways. I feel like, in a way, though, he's did it in an abusive way. Like, he should have mm. mentioned these points at the time. You can't be going, I said nothing when you let a werewolf in the school. I said nothing when you let Hagrid breed those werewolves under a bed. Hey, if you had a problem with it, you should have said at the time. You can't be throwing it in my face now. Yeah, exactly. That says more about you than it says about me. Mm. Yeah. Next thing, Snape's getting in on it. Who's this? Severus Snape. He gets his arm out. He's like, hey, look at this dark mark tattoo. Yeah, it's gone dark and we were all summoned. Thank God that tattoo is on his arm. Right? <laughs> hey, look at this tattoo on me in a thigh. It's gone black. Right. Snape, there are children here. Hey, look at this dark mark tattoo. And look at this one. I've got a skeleton over here. That's my ex-girlfriend's name. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at this dark mark on me buttock. That's, your, that's Uranus. That's Uranus, Snape. Yeah? It's not a tattoo. Yeah. Oh, it went a bit browner when I heard that Voldemort was back. Oh, I've been told off. <laughs> Smutty. No, no one wants that. No. Well, let us know in the chat. Do you want to hear more about that. Snape shitting himself? <laughs> let us know in the live chat. <laughs> hey, I like this. We can find out live what, what uh, people think. Yeah, that's good. That's good, isn't it? That's good, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, um, oh, my favourite bit 
of this chapter definitely has to be Dumbledore starts telling everyone, right, you go do this, you go do that. Bill, go to the ministry, tell Arthur Weasley everything that's happened, yeah? yeah? He goes, Snape, you go tell Lupin. Not Snape. Sirius, you go tell Lupin. Yeah. Sirius Black transforms himself into a dog. <laughs> I know which bit you're going to say. <laughs> Runs across the room and approaches the door whose handle he turns with his paw. That's <laughs> just him. <laughs> Imagine that. That was shot. This Paul just coming up and whoop. <laughs> it reminds me of that film. I can't remember. It's like, it's like that shaggy dog or something. But there's a film, it's like from the 70s, where there's a dog and he runs into that. this room and it cuts to him punching this man at the desk. And it's clearly a bloke in a dog suit. <laughs> he just goes like that and then jumps out the window. But this is what made me think serious black. How's he turning a door handle with his uh, with his hand? There's with his no paw? there's no reason for that door to have been shut. He couldn't. No. He could have just walked out. Yeah, yeah. And Sirius Black turned also turned into a dog after you've opened the door, eh, Sirius? <laughs> so Sirius Black turned into a dog and then struggled to turn the key in the lock. Sirius Black turned into a dog, then ate his dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sirius, you can turn into a dog after you've gone through the door. Sirius, it's me, your wife. <laughs> Would you like to have sex with me tonight? Yeah, turn into a dog. No, <laughs> no, no, I don't want that. <laughs> I want it as you. Get off me, you mutt. <laughs> In your bed on your rug. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Dumbledore makes Snape and Sirius shake hands before they uh, they leave. And it's like, what is this primary school? Like, does that ever work? I think it does. Do you? Yeah. You know, how do you mean? <laughs> because then you don't have that hostility. You've had to ha go through physical contact, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Because you can't, unless you disassociate during the handshake. Should we shake hands now? Yeah. Look at that. Look, he's disassociating. <laughs> I'm disassociating, much like the time that uh, I shook the hand of Ed Miliband, which I must have told you about before. You disassociated? Well, he had a very limp grip, and I didn't Did enjoy it. it. It was like shaking a octopus's tentacle, if you can imagine such a thing. Have you been jabbed in the chest by a teacher at school? Never in my life. How about in the back? Oh, lots of times, You've yeah. been slapped on the back of the head by a student at your school? Yeah, must have been, yeah. <laughs> Students love doing stuff like that, shutting doors when you're trying to get through them and being being daft. Yeah. One lad got expelled at my school for trying to bite a teacher. He did bite a teacher. I'm she glad went, that sentence has an end. She went, trying to bite, are you? Get out of this school. <laughs> we suck our dinners here. Eh? Trying to chew on your food, are you? We don't do that at St Mungo's. She put her arms out. She went, one-way system. And he grabbed her arm and went... What? Expelled. My fiancé had an awkward handshake with Ed Miliband too, says Peter Green. There you go. Two eyewitness accounts. Do you think he did it you both at the same time? Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what made it so awkward. <laughs> we were doing an old Lang Syne triangle and he just didn't have the grip. Is there a nicer song than old Lang Syne? Yeah, Bare Necessities. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with that. <laughs> hey, what do we think in the chat? Do we think old Lang Syne is a nicer song than the Bare Necessities? Let us know in the chat. Which one do you think is nicer? If you think there's... <laughs> <laughs> is Old Lang Syne the greatest song of all time? Type yes in the chat. Right, if you that's agree. a different question. Let right. old acquaintance be forgotten. Hallowed be thy name. Oh, thy there's a lot of fans of Old Lang Syne. Thy will be done on heaven as in earth. Martina, you've never heard of Old Lang Syne. <laughs> she will have done. They don't sing that in Germany. Yeah. Let all the acquaintance be. She loves it. Daisy loves old Lang Syne. <laughs> be forgotten. Uh, Hallowed be, be thy name. name. 
I think <laughs> I will. Uh, she has not. She's a liar. Martina has a of old Lang Syne. I think I'll concede then that old Lang Syne is nicer than Bare Necessities. It's the nicest song of all time. That I will still contest. All right. It's it's the first of January. You know, at yeah. like two minutes past. No, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> two minutes past. Hey, minutes. happy New Year! I won't right. sing that. Wait two minutes. <laughs> all right, now we can sing. No, you're two minutes oh, into the song. Oh, oh, all right, you're two minutes. Into two the minutes song. into the song. <laughs> How many verses are you doing? <laughs> you. Everyone's looking around. People are crying because yeah. it's beautiful. And then you're starting to reflect. You're like, "What is my life? Yeah. What am I doing here at this party? How am I going to get home? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, why has no one kissed me?" <laughs> Hey, I think Peter's got a point. It's unfairly aided by the power of human fellowship. I agree. If at midnight, every New Year's Eve, everybody crossed their hands like this in a circle and went, look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Forget about your worries and your strife. I love that the higher tempo of it makes it very, very active shaking, doesn't it? If you put the paw off the prickly paw... <laughs> Golly, thanks, Blue. <laughs> hey, that'd be good. I think parties will be uh, divided into two from now on. Yeah. Do you want to come to my New Year's Eve party? Are you old Lang Syne or Bare Necessities? It's an old Lang Syne house. Then no. No, <laughs> I'm a Bare Necessities girl. I'm going to be going to a Bare Necessities party. If you prick the ball, well, the ball. ball. <laughs> you all in a bit of ball, ball. Maybe try a few. <laughs> Oh, not enough gravitas on bare necessities, mm. apparently. Uh, what can we say? Yeah. So it's decided, Old Lang Syne is the greatest song of all time. Everyone agrees? Yeah. Daisy. Uh, Snowy doesn't, he's snaking, shaking his head. No, he's doing a swirl, like going, oh yeah, I love Old Lang Syne. <laughs> I love Old Lang Syne. Woo! <laughs> And the people who've said nothing are just quietly reflecting. <laughs> yeah. They're quietly reflecting on Old Lang Syne. They've probably left their computers completely to go to the uh, Spotify and go, Spotify, play Old Lang Syne now. I can't wait <laughs> six months till the new year. Yeah. Five Bloody months. Hell. Five months, so you're scaring me now. Yeah. <sighs> And finally, a very weird ending to the chapter. I don't really understand what's oh, going on. Well, <laughs> Harry falls asleep. Well, something happens. They says there's a loud bang, and then Hermione turns up with something in her hand, and then Harry goes to sleep, and then that's it. It doesn't explain what, why there was a loud bang, what Hermione's got in her hand. Cliffhanger, my old boy. A cliffhanger. I hope it's resolved in the next chapter. There's only one left. Mm. Yeah. Hallowed be thy name. Old Lang Syne. Well, that's all I've got on that chapter. Well, that leads. Right, hang on. Right. How many, how many Old Lang Syne's out of five are you going to give that, that chapter? It was good. It was a bit chatty, chatty. It was a bit, uh, you know, boring in some ways. But I did like the the butting of heads of Dumbledore and Fudge. It's nice to see two of the most influential men in the wizarding world having at it like a couple of people on EastEnders. Uh, I did enjoy that. That was a bit of fun. <laughs> Uh, I enjoyed Harry falling asleep twice. I enjoyed Mrs. Weasley. I enjoyed a lot of things about this. Yeah. Was it a great chapter? I'm going to say no. But I'm going to give it three and a half Old Lang Syne's out of five. Mm. Yeah. What a fair review. For me, I like this chapter. Yeah. Do you know why? Because Harry Potter barely said anything in it. Hey, <laughs> pepperoni pizza! <laughs> What? <laughs> Started to get that in. I've not said it this week, have I? You've said it thrice. But the <laughs> thing is, Dumbledore is kicking into action, just like in the last chapter. Yeah. He's interrogating. He's bossing people about. Yeah. He's proving. He's, he's highlighting Sir Snowy. Uh, not Sir Snowy. Come, Come on, Peter Green. Eat that bay leaf. 
He was highlighting. He was highlighting. <laughs> <laughs> He's distracting me, Peter Green, with your dirty dinner. <laughs> <laughs> he was highlighting, right? Yeah. What a bad figurehead Cornelius Fudge is. Yeah. You know? mm. I loved everyone kicking into action. It was, and my favourite bit was that uh, dog paw opening the door. For that yeah. reason, I give it five old lang Zines out of five. Fantastic. I didn't realise how suntanned I was until I saw you two northern boys on. You to read out and then we'll uh, we'll open it up to you guys if you have anything you want to ask. Good to go. All right. Quiz, quizicky, quiz, quizicky, quiz, 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 Gonna ask you some questions, how well will you do? Quiz, quizicky, quiz, quizicky, quiz, 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 Gonna ask you about Harry Potter, Lucas, how well will you do? How blow you a kiss? Ooh, have we ever sang that line together? No. Also, I'm looking at you, Sir Snowy. Why didn't you sing along? You're the only one who's got the camera on. <laughs> <laughs> and he just stayed there as if uninterested. Checking his text. I'll just check a text, I reckon. <laughs> hey, girl, you better check your text. You ready, you ready for the quiz? Yeah. What colour was Mrs. Weasley? Oof. What colour was Mrs. Weasley? White. Correct. What colour were Mrs. Weasley's lips? <laughs> uh, red. No, they were white. Huh? Uh, question three. What did Madame... How did Madame Pomfrey go back to her office? With a hand over her mouth. No, she bustled. Oh. Question four. What kind of mattress did Harry have? Plump. It was feather. Oh. And what was the last word of the book? Of the chapter? Yeah, chapter. Uh, sleep. No, oh, I forgot to write it down. It was like, uh... Well, that's not it. It was like... <laughs> Down or something. It was like down, that bit. Down. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, you have lost the quiz. <gasps> quiz, quiz, key, quiz, 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 Gonna ask you some questions. How well will you do? Quiz, quiz, key, quiz, 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 and now it is time for the nation's second favourite segment. It's Hedwig's Droppings. We're not alluding to owl poo. We're not alluding to ploppings. We mean the messages you send in when you allude to Hedwig's Droppings. What's in a beat this week? Well, we've had a few lovely messages and we start off with a five-star review from Jay Plates. And Jay Plate says, a must for any Potter fans, five out of five Hedwig's droppings. Mm. Thank you very much, Jay Plate. We've also had a message from Jamie D'Souza on Instagram. And he says, hi, lads. Just wanted to say, stumbled across your podcast a few weeks ago and I'm now hooked. You're both very funny and I can't get enough. Oh, that's nice. Thank you very much, Jamie D'Souza. And we've had a question on Instagram from Shelley. And Shelley asks, if either of you could polyjuice yourselves to be someone else in the real world, who would it be and what would you do? Yeah. I reckon I'd polyjuice myself into, um, into you, I reckon. Yeah, what would you do? I'd pretend to be you and ruin your reputation. By just acting like yourself. By acting like myself. <laughs> I'd be nice to everybody. He'd be sticking his lips out, wiggling his bum. Yeah, he'd go, ooh, I'm Tom <laughs> Lawrence and on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I would transform myself into Donald Trump. Yeah. And I would talk and do my impression of him and see if anything anyone thought anything was uh, askew. Oh, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. There you go, Shelley. We've also had a message from Dam underscore Smith on Twitter, and they say, started listening to the Pot Vision podcast yesterday, devouring it faster than first year Harry at a Hogwarts feast. I personally think Jim Parsons could make a great Gilderoy Lockhart. He's that bloke off, uh, not the Great British Bake Off, the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> How did I get them too confused? They sound a bit similar, don't they? Well, thing is, what's he called? Uh, Clayton or Unfortunately, yeah. Americans can't be in Harry Potter. Yeah. It's not allowed. They're allowed in Fantastic Beasts. 
Because some of that is in New York. Hmm. Yeah? Uh, but, uh, yeah. It wouldn't work with him. What's it called? Sheldon, that's it, from Big Bang Theory. But there was a picture that uh, they sent that it did look a bit like him. <laughs> yeah. And finally, we've got a message from Brad, uh, who says, Just started listening last week, and I'm honestly in love. Ooh, with which one of us, I think? I'd finished Potterless, but was fed up with the Yanks and needed some UK voices. You put Stephen Fry to shame. By the way, if you mention this comment, then that would be awesome, as I won't even know you have for a couple of months until I'm caught up. Also, any chance on a Mole Song Part 2? Maybe with a feature. That could be good. We'll have to write a sequel to the Mole Song. This message is from Lucas Kirkby. <laughs> no, it's from Brad on the website. Mm. And finally, before we go to our live questions, uh, we've got a brand new baby, Harry, who's here. This this is going to be a live induction to the, the patrons. We've got Daisy Chetwind, who's our new baby, Harry. <laughs> oh, she's coming on for it. <laughs> she wants to see it. Hey! Daisy, you are a baby getting your hair cut at a salon. You have three... Three single strands of hair <laughs> poking up. The hairdresser, you can hear the snippers by your ears. Oh, tss, 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 tss. oh, be careful with me, you think, as a tot. <laughs> <laughs> she starts trimming away at your hairs, but unfortunately, they land in your eyes and you fall out of the chair and you drop your cup of coffee. You hit the floor <laughs> and are scrambling round, covered in coffee and now hair. Mm. Thick, black hair. Because <laughs> a man has just had his chest shaved in the same salon. You walk out into the street as a baby and almost get run over by a car. But I'm on a bicycle, I jump off, I throw you in the air and then I catch you. No kisses yet because you are covered in dirty hair. I throw you into a water fountain. You land in there like the baby from that Nirvana album, albeit fully clothed. I and um, babies can swim, so I'll give you ten minutes in there, holding your breath. You reverted back to the fetal uh, state where babies don't need to breathe. Yeah. I jump in, fish you out, and mwah. There we go, the first ever live induction to the Pottervision Patreon. <laughs> very, very welcome, Daisy. Now, we're going to go over to... Oh, Daisy's happy with that, very good. Uh, and all that while you're on a train as well. Uh, hopefully you've not got the loudspeakers on. I hope she has. <laughs> Excuse me, this is a quiet carriage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we've, we've got some messages from uh, people live on the chat. So, oh, we've got one from Martina. She says, if you were an animal, what animal would you be? Nothing yeah. to do with Harry Potter. That's absolutely fine, Martina. So if you were an animal, what kind of animal would you be? Oh, I'd probably be King Kong. <laughs> A specific animal, King Kong. Why? I'd be King Kong, the animal. And I'd yeah. climb up the Empire State Building. Yeah. I wouldn't take a woman up there with me. No, yeah. I'd leave those uh, people alone. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd just come down. They'd be no near to yeah. shoot me. How about you? I think I would be a squid. Because I could just float about a bit. And if I... You know what? I hate it when I run out of ink. On my printer, in my pens. Where I could just fart some out of my body. And then I'd have, uh, I'd have ink, wouldn't I? That's disgusting. Imagine that. You're in an exam. And then you start going... Excuse me, sir. Yeah? Not appropriate. You use ink from a... <laughs> ink from a pen. Not your own... Anus. My pen ran out. You ask for an invigilator if that happens. <laughs> yeah? You don't excrete your own ink. Huh? <laughs> so thank you very much, Martina. We've had another message from Peter Green, who's finished his moussaka. He says he's coming to see your show tomorrow. Well, Peter, it's not tomorrow. It's Thursday, so don't come tomorrow. It's not happening tomorrow. Come on Thursday, mm. when, it, when it is happening. Uh, he's excited to see if it's a sausage or a sea bomb night. Mm. Sometimes Tom calls me a sausage, and sometimes Tom calls me a sea bomb. Mm. 
What will it be? Do you know already, Tom? No, it completely depends on the audience. Mm. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. It's down to you, audience. If you're there laughing at the naughty bits, cheering. I wonder if Peter Green's going to bring a dinner and throw it at you for insulting it. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> I hope halfway through I just get covered in mush <laughs> and one bay leaf. <laughs> That'd be lovely. And, uh, and we've had a message... From oh Snowy's still waiting for his signed poster. It'll be in the post tomorrow. We'll be doing the the welcome video to to welcome you as a baby Draco, and we'll be sending it in the post. Uh, and then Snowy's going to ask me a maths question in the Patreon. Have you sent that already, Snowy? No, not yet. All right, so we might answer that one later. Now, does anyone else have any questions that they want to ask live on the on the audio? Uh, I know we said that that was going to be an option. Feel free. Otherwise, we will finish off with the, the raffle. <clears throat> oh, did you guys ever try pepper army super noodles, said Daisy? I've never tried that. I don't think I did. Ooh, do they still exist, Daisy, or are they, uh, are they out of circulation now? Ah, discontinued. <laughs> First the green ketchup and now this. Bloody hell. Yeah, oh, fair enough. All right, we can see people are typing. Check eBay. <laughs> What's their sell-by date? I bet they last about 10 years. Pepper Army Super Noodles. Hey, Pepper Army Super Noodles. Hey. <laughs> All right, and we can see Peter Green's typing. This might be one more question before we do uh, the old raffle. Here we go. Do you want no, to he's it? not. He's not typing. All Damn. right, fair enough. Right, so we shall go to the raffle. So I shall share. I've numbered everybody who wanted to be on the, the raffle. Mm. So let's get this all nice and big. So these are all the numbers from one to nine. And I'll get up a random number generator. So random number generator. We'll do it twice. And uh, if the same person comes up, we won't give you two portraits we'll wait till we get two people who've uh, who've got them all right tom you're going to verify that this is going to be random yeah sure and so what should we raffle off first the one of me or the one of you uh mine right so this is the one you painted i don't know oh right so we're going to raffle off the one that looks like me that looks like the one of you who's this right so this is the one i painted of tom and the winner is Number five, Shelley. So, Shelley, you've won a painting of Tom that I drew. All right, now the next one. Uh, well, this... that postage is coming out of your Patreon share. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Gonna have to send a bloody portrait to America. Uh, all right, then. Yeah, uh, go on. So, this is now the one of you that you did of me. Yeah, the one that looks like you. The one that looks like me. And this is number six. Which is Abby Allen. So well done, Abby. You are hopefully in the UK. I think she is, yeah. I think she lives there down south. But I might be making that up. But well done on those two winners. All right. This has been the Pottervision Podcast. Thank you so, so much for listening. We are in Edinburgh from the 4th till the 24th of August. Every day at 1.30. It's going to be a barrel of laughs. But otherwise, you can follow us Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok. And you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Pottervision. Who knows mm. if it's been enjoyed. We might do another live recording sometime soon. Mm. Next week, we will be on episode 94. And it's the final chapter of The Goblet of Fire. Chapter 37, The Beginning. That must be false. This is the last chapter. How would it be called that? I don't know. We'll find out next week. All right, go on. You have been a live in-person Tom Lawrenson. And you have been a house guest Lucas Kirby. Goodbye. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody, for coming and listening. I don't know if it was a good experience. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that was a live podcast uh, record. So, yeah, uh, do people want us to do uh, another one? I know we've got our 100th episode coming up 
soon. Uh, it might be good uh, to do then. Better than TV. We'll take that, uh, Snowy. Uh, but yeah, thank you all so, so much for coming. I don't know if anyone has anything they want to ask or say or or whatever. But, uh, but yeah. All right, then. Well, thank you so, so much, everybody. Thanks for supporting us. Uh, it does. It does mean a lot, and we'll do. Uh, we'll do something like this again soon because this has been. Uh, I think it was fun. good. I think it was a good format. Maybe we should yeah. change it somehow. Maybe we should like yeah. go onto Twitch or something. Do it like live or something. Oh, that could be interesting. Yeah. yeah, we'll have a little think. It's been good. A hundred episodes in, we slowly start doing <laughs> things that we should have done in the first place. When we first started doing this, I went to him and we should buy some microphones so it sounds good. And he goes. Oh, those things cost hundreds of pounds. Yeah. Might have been better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. But there we go. All right. Well, thank you so, so much. And uh, we shall see you all very soon. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. bye. <laughs>